Um, right now, the, uh, as we both are aware, the, the uh, regional plans are being, modified, are being looked at on the Forest Service and on the BLM. Uh, the House Federal Side Forestry and, uh, and Bishops Committee basically just came out. They got marked up last end of last week and passed. There's a lot of nice things that I see in there, and including some of our work from the CWPP aspects that we put forward. Um, Tom's been only very, very inclined to bring a lot of those category exclusions and bring them up to 15,000 acres from where they have been. Uh, we're going to have topic in your post fire recovery. And um, there's some pieces in there that even talk about uh, bonding. If you're going to file a lawsuit against the federal government, you have to be able to file a bond for the amount of loss that they would incur prior to that lawsuit being able to be filed. So it, the intent is not to circumvent the uh, equal access to justice concept, but to stop the frivolous lawsuits. So the frivolous lawsuits are designed up in more for delay policy or tactics. So if they're going to have to put money up to delay things, they may not be so inclined knowing that they're going to lose anyway. So they'll just stop that process. So there's some nice pieces in that. Currently, the administration is neutral on it, which is very And he has an opportunity to get to the Senate and move forward. So he's given us indications that it's going to possibly be uh, uh, climbing the law. Does that mean we're going to cut timber next week? No. Does it mean we're going to cut as soon as we start using the law? No. That just means there's going to be more lawsuits that stop whatever. So be more it. fundraising. More fundraising, yeah. Um, uh, the DC decision, the DC District Court decision to meet the ONC Act uh, minimum cut was overturned. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Okay. Yeah, that was overturned, so I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, claiming that AFRC didn't necessarily have, or industry didn't have any losses, so to speak. So I'm sure they'll be figuring out how to re turn their, uh, their thought process and turn it in the right direction. So they look to see I don't see that moving over there either. Um, which is in some people's mind. You know, you can go your way. I mean, it's kind of a big hit, especially on a financial basis for the county. Um, CWPP draft will be coming out here shortly. That's a community wildfire protection plan. Uh, I don't know if this uh, community understands how that works. But the CWPP is basically the uh, county's plan. We write it. We're doing a risk analysis on the, the forest, health, safety, and welfare, economic benefits, uh, recreation is part of that, so it's the health effects of the uh, forest fires on our community. So that risk analysis, the comprehensive risk analysis has never really been done. So I went ahead and funded that to look at that. I kind of feel that the, uh, the population should be considered as part of the environment. And so who drafted that? It's in the process of being drafted right now. Oh, the people we hired to do it have That's to go consulting. back. Yeah, it's all it's consultant work and um, agency. Everybody can take care of this done. Is that the work that was done through the Southern Oregon Forest yeah. Conservation Project? Yeah. So that will be coming out here soon. We'll take a good look at it. And that will eventually, well, that's the beginning of what the final plan will look like. Um, now, why is that significant, in my opinion, as a commissioner? Um, because the 2003 HIFRA, Everybody's familiar with the HIFRA. Um, it gives us a little bit of ability to um, bring in the social, economic, and health, safety, and welfare aspects of the community and start integrating into some of the federal management plans. In this particular case, the CWPP is developed because of contractual, the way it's set up in the state of Oregon. Uh, the state forestry adopts the plan because state forestry is the uh, fire management for a BLM, it automatically becomes a federal plan. So it's, there's always a way to get your word in, just have to figure out the right avenue. Sometimes we get on our voting topic and keep talking to you, you got to get it done right in front of us. So um, that is one thing that's uh, looking forward to seeing. It should be done by the end of the year, but the draft will be, is supposed to be done out by end of the month. Um, trying to think what others 
stuff on this energy and natural resource side. We do agriculture, right? Yes. Marijuana is a fun one. Um, I got word today that the state, well, let's back up. The state has been going out of their way, uh, certain representatives from the southern portions of our region to uh, recreationalize marijuana without any type of control locally except from state centralized programs. With that being said, uh, I got word today from our attorney in Salem, our association attorney, that he was successful in getting it out of the joint committee, which is the House Senate Joint Committee, on uh, local opt-out options for local governments. So if they don't, it's two different paths from what I understand. Uh, looks like potential, if the local wants to do it, they have a, a revenue stream that they can do through local taxation. Don't know if it's gonna happen on the medical side, but it looks like on the recreational side. Understand this is just coming out of committee right now. However, um, the subsidy for the House and the Senate that it's being sent off. Let's see where that looks. I've, I've heard from our uh, representative that he has no plans on letting us have any um, local authority over it at all. Keep it all state centralized. So, that's so who's that base? Or? I don't want to say okay. anything on the record. So okay. all, I, all I'll say is our southernmost representative. Okay. Did they allow the local entities that they give them that portion of the tax on that? Well, so under the Measure 91, the counties will receive 10 percent of the revenue. And that 10 percent, and then uh, a formula will be derived, and it will be distributed statewide. So, um, state Oregon State Police under Measure 91 receives 15 percent of the revenue. What if they added another three percent on the sales tax? So it would be to the local. Until government. I until I see what, what until they until the final gavel yeah. goes down in Salem this year, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it that way. It's so fluid and dynamic that sometimes it's better to play a great defense. I would agree. And right now we're on that defensive role, so that we don't have the option to be on the offensive role because of the political makeup of the House and Senate right now. Um, so it's just one of those things we just keep tight, make sure, make sure that we're keeping the county intact and we're keeping the park defensive as best as we can. And where opportunity presents itself, grab a little bit of yardage, so to speak. Um, as these bills move forward, so make sure that our interests are really, really involved on the field. Um, with all that being said, I leave Thursday night, uh, so I'll be on the, I was appointed to the RAC, the Rules Advisory Committee for the OLCC for the implementation of Measure 91. So I'm able to take our, I'm the only elected official within the state that sits on that advisory committee to make recommendations for the final administrative law. So, um, yeah, that's, we got to make sure our interests are covered and we're moving forward. So, um, working close with the state association and attorneys to make sure that the, the rural portions of the state are well represented. So, I just got back from Colorado. That was some nice, wonderful commissioners from that side and did meet with the commission. Uh, the main uh, association representative from Washington here a couple of weeks ago on the what's the best practices for the different states. And one thing about Colorado, which is a misnomer, a lot of people don't realize, while they did legalize it, they left local control in the counties. They stayed in the traditional concept. They didn't centralize it. They said counties have these rights which I thought was brilliant. So all the legal legalization concepts in Colorado that I've been listening to and, and over the media are as a bunch of hype. The only legal spots within the state for recreation are in the Denver metropolitan area. The rest of the state is still illegal. Yeah, because local jurisdictions maintain that local control. And the, I would say 95% of the state has basically opted out or, or stayed away from it for only this little poor section is the, the recreational side. So there's more to the story when you start digging down and figuring out what's working and what's not working in other states. So, um, yeah, and I see that uh, local control option for Colorado is what's working for them. So. 
Oh, let's see. What else am I missing? I mean, there has to be something else let's out see. there. So, you guys know what I mean. Agriculture, grazing, fish, wildlife, forest, land use, mining, management, <coughs> water resources, that's you know, what we do. Fish and wildlife, I bit the river the other day. It took seven, maybe two. Okay. <laughs> Those issues there are a lot very time consuming.